Good morning, and welcome to KZSE News, local news from the Monterey Bay. On today's show, the students of Cabrillo have been hacked, a fire rages in Bear Creek. Look into the downtown preacher, the Omei Chinese food restaurant opens up again after scandal. A look into the wine country fires, how the police chief is choosing to deal with the current homelessness situation, an interview with Chicano Batman, and the police called on UCSC students at a Republicans meeting on campus. Recently, it was announced on Friday, October 6th, that the Cabrillo College server was hacked into, exposing thousands of students' information. 40,000 students who were affected were then notified by email and offered a credit monitoring and identity protection service. Social security numbers, emails, passwords, names, dates of birth, and addresses have been possibly jeopardized. Fortunately, however, the college has not found evidence that this information has been used yet. Since the breach, Cabrillo has applied a more protected password storage system in hopes of avoiding future hacks. A structure fire erupted just off of Bear Creek Canyon Road in the Santa Cruz Mountains on Monday night, 10 miles from UC Santa Cruz. The fire has been named Bear Fire, and as of Wednesday morning is 271 acres and growing, and is only at 10% containment, according to Cal Fire. There is currently no time frame for containment, Cal Fire spokeswoman Angela Bernheisel said. The light wind has not been a significant factor in the fire, and as of Tuesday afternoon, the Bear Creek fire was within a half mile of homes, which were downhill from the fire, according to the Santa Cruz Sentinel. I'm Cameron Elliott. In downtown Santa Cruz, it's very difficult at times to exercise your freedom of speech when you are sharing the Christian gospel. You get a lot of resistance, hecklers, saxophones, those bongo drums, etc. And so having a little 16-watt little amplifier around your neck helps out quite a bit. That's Donald Harmon, a born-again Christian who preached on the downtown streets of Santa Cruz from 2013 to 2015 until citizen complaints were filed and later his permit to use amplification was revoked by the Santa Cruz Police Department. This week, Harmon told KZSC that a federal lawsuit filed in 2016 on his behalf by the Center for Religious Expression had been concluded and that the city of Santa Cruz has paid a $100,000 settlement. I signed the settlement agreement on September 22nd. We do have an approval from a judge on the agreement. The agreement settled. The money is received. My attorneys were um, granted $100,000. I received $1, which my objective was just to be able to, to freely proclaim the gospel in, 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 in Santa Cruz um, with amplification. That's all I wanted. The Santa Cruz City Attorney's Office spoke with KZSC but declined to comment on the settlement of the lawsuit. Roger Grisby, the owner of the Omei Chinese food restaurant, reopened his business on Tuesday after a month and a half closure with plans to transfer its ownership. Back in August, it was revealed that Grisby had donated up to $500 to the U.S. Senate campaign of Louisiana's David Duke during his unsuccessful 2016 run. Duke served as a Ku Klux Klan leader from 1974 to 1978. Grisby decided to close his business down in August originally because he became aware of internet-based accusations of racism and bigotry, combined with the related resignation of his entire wait staff. Agreed upon on Friday, Grisby said he is in the process of transferring ownership of Omei to longtime head chef and manager Carl Cook. Cook, who Grisby has described as almost like a son, has never known Grisby to hate people based on color. He is described as loving where he works and grew up with the Omei co-workers. Grisby says the restaurant is not yet completed yet, but it is underway. Crews continue to work on containing the many fires raging throughout Northern California. As of Wednesday, the death toll from said fires has risen to 42. The deadliest of the fires, the Tubbs Fire, having caused 22 deaths, was mostly under control by Wednesday. After burning through 36,000 acres and leveling much of the city of Santa Rosa, it was 91% contained. There has been a combination of light winds, increased moisture, and lower temperatures that has aided firefighting efforts across the region, said Cal Fire spokesman Daniel Berlant. 
Considering that, fire personnel are cautiously optimistic in terms of final containment, while keeping in mind that these fires can be vol volatile and weather can change. Most Sonoma County evacuation orders have been lifted for the areas that were not burned, and all mandatory evacuation orders have been lifted in Napa County, though some roads are still closed. Residents are returning to their homes in Mendocino County as well, after the Redwood and Sulphur fires destroyed a combined 680 structures. The air quality in Santa Cruz has been affected by the recent fires in Boulder Creek and in Napa and surrounding areas. The air quality index is rated as moderate. Air quality is acceptable, however, for some pollutants there may be a moderate health concern for a very small number of people who are unusually sensitive to air pollution. I'm Killian Fay. I'm Sophia Lynn. Under the orders of its new chief, the Santa Cruz Police Department has launched a new approach to homelessness and outdoor sleeping. On Sunday, Chief Andy Mills revealed his intentions to de-emphasize enforcement of the city's overnight public camping ban. From 9 p.m. until 6 a.m., SCPD will not issue camping citations unless there is a complaint by someone in control of that property or some other crime or nuisance behavior is taking place, Mills wrote. Instead, the police will turn their focus to finding those stealing out of your yards, cars, and homes during the night. The police chief had this to say that if there's an ongoing problem of some kind that's causing great angst in the community, then they have that discretion to use the tools that they've been given, which is writing citation for enforcement, for instance, uh, if they feel that's appropriate under that circumstance. But by and large, we would uh, just assume, uh, assume to let people uh, sleep during the nighttime hours. That does not apply during the daytime hours, and it does also does not apply during the uh, considering other behavioral problems that may exist. Just days after the chief's op-ed was published, his officers had used personal persuasion rather than positional power to clear out what he estimated was about a dozen people regularly sleeping along the chain link fencing outside the downtown post office. Mills said the familiar faces were offered supportive services such as motel vouchers and mental health services in the days leading up to the clear out. October 14th, the UCSC Cory Amphitheater reopened. It was a $7.5 million project with $6.4 million coming from student fees. This is the largest contribution UCSC students have given back to the campus in the over 50 years of UC Santa Cruz history. KZSC got a chance to speak to the headlining band from Saturday's concert, Chicano Batman, about playing at the new venue. What did you think of performing here uh, in this venue, yeah. this being the first time <laughs> anyone's performed at uh, this venue? I mean, it's, it's a real honor, you know. Like I was saying, someone on stage, um, we, we all went to college, and so we know, we know what this is, what activities like this, concerts like this, what they do to shape like identity, you know, especially as an 18, 19, 20-year-old. You know, we're hungry for culture, we're hungry for, for knowledge, we're, we're thirsty for it. You know, that's why we're in college, you know, and we just seek, seek what, what we want. And um, it, it's good to be part of, like, part of that, that growth for a, a, any youth, any student, you know, at any age, really. So it's like, it's a true honor. Yeah. On Sunday, October 15th, the Santa Cruz College Republicans held a general meeting in the basement of the McHenry Library. At around 10.21 p.m., campus police responded to a call concerning the meeting and arrested three students and detained a fourth. One of the arrested protesters, Sabina Wildman, is also a representative on the Student Union Assembly at UCSC. The college Republicans attended the most recent SUA meeting on Tuesday night and attempted to have Wildman removed from her position. Wildman spoke with KZSC on the matter, responding to allegations made by the college Republicans that she was not upholding her position by speaking out against their org. I believe that there is no such thing as being neutral. There is no such thing as being unbiased. I believe that when you are representing people, you are representing people who are politicized, people who experience violence. And I do truly believe that I am representing UCSC principles of community, of justice, of diversity. Um, I would also just say... Um, that I chose to uh, abstain my vote from all of this conversation as well as choosing not to speak. Ultimately, the SUA voted to not proceed with the motion. 
Kavya Asadati. I'm Weston Gray. I'm Sophia Lynn. I'm Cameron Elliott. This is John Malkin. I'm Killian Fay. And I'm Jordan Penland with KZSE News, local news from the Monterey Bay 